Welcome back, Egyptology lovers. Today we're going to do a small translation, an important one, from the Theban tomb designated TT359. Uh, this is located at Deir el Medina, and it's dated between 1186 to 1155 BC during the reign of Ramses III and also to Ramses IV during the 20th dynasty. Now, this tomb is located on the west bank of the Nile, opposite to Luxor in the Theban necropolis. It is the burial place of ancient Egyptian workman named Inerchau. Uh, he has two tombs, so his name is Inerchau, which is, means Inni is appearing, which is an aspect of Horus, who was a foreman of the Lord of the Two Lands in the Place of the Truth. And he also owns both these tombs. So this one is TT359. He owns another one, which is TT299. Inahau was the son of a similar titled foreman named Hui. Inahau's wife was named Wab. You can see her located at the far right. So in the scene, what we have is Inahau and his wife Wab. They are sitting down being entertained by a harpist who is considered blind. And he is sitting down in a very standard posture upon a reed mat. And he is playing a very elaborately decorated harp. Now, this particular tomb has a translation known as the Harper's Song or Harpist Song or Harper's Songs. And this particular song has come down to us from the Middle Kingdom. We can go as far back as the Old Kingdom. This particular translation here is from the New Kingdom because of Ramses III and Ramses IV. Now, this translation or this particular test is important because what it does, it gives us the most modernistic type of skeptical philosophy or rationalism. So Egyptians were very fond of the, uh, the afterlife. Of course, their whole life was encompassed or surrounded by the preparation of death. Now, these songs uh, display varying degrees of hope in the afterlife that range from skeptical through to more a traditional expression of confidence. These texts are accompanied by drawings, as you can see, of the blind harpist and are therefore thought to have been sung, but we don't know that. Now, the expression here is one of a fleeting life where basically it says there's no need to build anything for yourself. Life is short. Enjoy your life. So really the philosophy here is to enjoy your life because everything you do now will be non-existent. So it's a very existential type of poem, which we don't get very often in ancient Egyptian. Everything is pretty liturgic, hymnic, but this is one of the few type of pieces that we find that actually gives us an idea into the negative or pessimistic side of life, even for the afterlife among the Egyptians. So the Harpist song is very famous. It's gone down all the way to uh, the late kingdom and even beyond that, if we can find anything. But what we're going to do is tackle the translation. It's going to start here on the very top right, and then we're going to work our way down. But I will zoom this in so you can see it better. So stay tuned for that. All right, welcome back, everyone. So we're going to start the translation right over here on the top right where you see this hand uh, is pretty much uh, spinning around and we'll work our way down and finish up to the very end on the left on the bottom down there. All right, so let's go over here. Here it says, Thus speaks that singer, so it's referring to the harpist, the singer of Osiris, the Osiris being the deceased, which is uh, Inochau, who is the owner of the tomb, the chief of the workmen, which is his title, in the place of truth. And now we have the the uh, the tomb name of the person, Inerchau, or Inerchau, the one who is Inerchau. All right, continuing up here now. True of voice or justify. So this is the word true of voice, which is pretty much like saying rest in peace, meaning that this person is deceased, but we wish, wish them a good rest. And then continuing down, it says... I say, I am that Lord, that man, being in truth, in or through good fortune, which was made by the God. So now that was an introduction up to here. The next one is basically now the poem explaining life's fleeting way and the way life just passes by. Things crumble. People pass and new generations come. So here's the text. Down here it says, the form that appears in the body, for it passes since the time of the God. These two are together since the time of the God. And then new in children coming in, 
continuing up here, coming in to their places or substituting the places of the old generation. Continuing, which includes the souls and the spirits who are in the underworld or the duat, the mummies as likewise or also the same. Continuing down here, for there too, the building or the construction of the houses and the tombs as likewise. So this means the houses and the tombs as well disappear, just like the people disappear and even the spirits disappear and descend to the underworld. So everything is fleeting. Now continuing down here, they are the men who rest in the pyramids or their pyramids. Now this is an important line because this tells us that the Egyptians believe that people rested in tombs. Uh, in especially pyramids, this is the word for pyramids. So this is harking to the pyramids of the 4th dynasty and 6th dynasty and every other dynasty that had pyramids. So the concept of pyramids in ancient Egypt here has given us evidence that the pyramids were a place of resting So for the deceased. So even those who built their pyramids are resting and have gone. Now continuing here, it gives honor to the pyramid builders. It says, you have made a tomb in the land, continuing up here, which is sacred, so it may last your name in it. So they want the names of the pharaohs to last or the uh, royalty or the tomb owners. They have built those pyramids so they can last forever. Their names can last forever. Continuing, it says, counted is your work of the necropolis and excellent shall be your place of the West. Now this means that all the work that the tomb owner Inichau has done, all the work of building the royal tombs in the Valley of the Kings has been counted for the afterlife and that he shall have an excellent rest in the place of the West, which is the place of people being buried in the Western Necropolis where the sun sets and where people go to the afterlife or the underworld. So now down here, we're going to get an expression that the Egyptians use kind of, of um, not as a metaphor, but more as an imagery. It says, as the waters or the river waters of Nun, which is the god of the great primordial ocean, goes downstream, and as the north winds go upstream so that every man goes to his hour. So basically saying just like the water flows and the wind moves, so too man will have his time and his hour will come. So what is the message that's partaken by or given by the Egyptians when your hour will come and you don't know when? Well, it says it here. Make good day. So live a good day. So live every day good, basically. And it continues here by finishing off the sentence for the title, which is the Osiris, referring to the tomb owner, the Osiris, the chief of the builders in the place of place of truth. And then you have the tomb owner again, Inarcha, which is Ini has appeared, or the one who is Ini has appeared, or Inarchaui. And then it says, true of voice, once again, referring that this is the rest in peace title, making sure that your heart is true of voice when you enter the underworld to have your heart weighed against the scales of Ma'at. All right, more explanation as to how to live your life without stress. It says, do not weary, or don't worry, don't worry about things. So do not weary your heart. Verily. Now this means repeat twice. So you say it again. Verily. Or you say the entire thing again. Do not weary your heart. Verily. With the one who is in or belongs to your heart. So this is referring to his wife, Wab. So his heart belongs to, so your heart belongs to, referring to his wife, Wab. So you and her don't worry or don't worry your hearts. Do not make injury to your heart and do not 
adore your existence. So basically saying, don't hurt your heart, don't break your heart, don't give it away so easily, and don't love your existence because it won't be here forever. So just enjoy day by day until the day comes. Because if you love your life too much, then you might lose it or be ill, and then you become frightened and you have a broken heart. All right, now the message repeats again. Make a good day. So it's reinforcing the first time we said it. Basically down here, make a good day. So make a good day verily. This means repeat again. Make a good day verily. So reinforcing the idea of making a good day every day. Now put incense and oil to that one with beside you. So basically saying, put the incense for your wife. That's the one beside you. And it continues over here and it says garlands, which goes over here, garlands, so type of uh, collar of flowers, garlands, garlands and lotuses and remet flower, a type of flower the Egyptians used, to your breast or chest area and to that one woman belonging to your heart. So make sure you put flowers and garlands around you and also to the woman next to you, which is his wife, Wab. It is she, going up here now, the one that sits at your side. So referring to the wife, reinforcing that the flowers and garlands to you and your wife and especially the one who sits next to you. Some more good advice coming forward here. It says, do not anger your heart over anything or anything happening. So keep your life happy, don't be upset. And then it says, put music of his thing, referring to the harpist, for you. So make sure you put music of the harpist for you. So music helps. So to the tomb owner, music was important. So music helps relax the individual. Here's some very careful advice in life as well. Do not recall or think of anything evil and abomination of a God. So don't think ill of a God. And then one more time, recall of you joy. So think of joy. That's what it's basically saying. Now, the last few columns will state the nature or the existence of the tomb owner of how he is and how he shall be forever and ever. This righteous, this man who is just and true and calm, continuing up here, who is friendly, content, relaxed, and happy and who does not speak evil. Give drunkenness, which goes up here, drunkenness, so drinking was important to the Egyptians, to your heart in the completion of the day. So basically drink till the end of the day or every day. Until comes the day of his path of mooring in it. Now this means mooring in it refers to when you've passed away and died, your life will be on the boat and you will sail to the afterlife is what they're saying. Well, that's it. That's the completion of the, the translation of Inner Chau of the Harper's poem. There are many versions of this and some of them are short, some of them are long, some of them are more detailed and that refers to the particular tomb owner or a particular scribe or the person who wants to express himself. You could see there is an existential threat here in the lives of the Egyptians where we always assume they love death and they're ready for it. Not necessarily. They were humans just like us. They were frightened. They knew that people pass and die and that every day is important to live. And it shows that you should play music and give to the one that you love as well as do not say evil things. Don't worry your heart and just enjoy every day. Drink and have a good time. Listen to music because life is short is the message that the Egyptians are speaking to us from this particular poem, 3,000 200 years. So we are all the same in the very end. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Please leave a comment and like. Let me know if you have anything 
interesting that uh, you want me to translate. I'll do my best. Sometimes I get very busy. But thanks again. And uh, please follow and have yourself a great day, everybody. And hope you learned something today. Take care.